SharePoint 2013 Permissions, the basics. As the lead support tech for the SharePoint 2013 per user product, I get a lot of questions about permissions. How do I add a user to my SharePoint site? How do I remove a user from my SharePoint site? Uh, can I set unique permissions at the document library or the folder level? Uh, we are going to be going over all of that and more in this video so that at the end you have a better understanding of how permissions work in SharePoint 2013. Let's get right into it. So first, let's add a user to our SharePoint site. In the upper right hand corner, click the site settings gear, click site settings from the drop down. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do it through the people and groups link or the site permissions link. We are going to go through people and groups. Make note of what group you're adding the user to. So you can see here we have scuba three members selected. We don't want to add a user there. We want to add them to the visitors group. As an important note, all of these groups might not be available to you. It does depend on the addition of SharePoint you're running, as well as the features you have activated on your SharePoint site. So you can see we, here we have Justin King in our visitors group. That's good. We want to add a new user. Click New. Let's add Shane Young to that group as well. Under Show Options, you can send an email or you can choose not to send an email. I, I never send an email to the user, but again, that's up to you. Another important note to make is that we do not allow external access to your SharePoint site, so any user you would like to add must have a Rackspace username and password to log in. Click Share. Okay, so now I have Justin King and Shane Young in the visitors group. You might be saying to yourself, well, what if I added the user to the wrong group? How do I correct that? That's simple. So let's take Jane out of this group. So you highlight, so you check the box next to his name. Under Actions, click Remove Users from Group. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do this? We're going to say OK. We actually want to add him as an owner. So click the Owners group. You'll see that my name is there by default because I am the owner of the site, but we want to add Shane as well. Click New. Start typing Shane's name. Select it. Show Options. Share. So now we've added Shane to the Owners group. So we have a user in the Owners group, and we have a user in the Visitors group. So let's see, how can we check these permissions? So to do that, in the upper right hand corner, click the site settings gear, click site settings from the drop down. This time we're going to click on site permissions under users and permissions. You'll see here that in the ribbon, you have a check permissions box. Let's click on that. Let's verify that Shane is an owner of the SharePoint site. So start typing his name. Oh, let's see, it already pops up. And click check now. And this shows you that Shane Young does have full control given through the Scuba 3 Owners Group. Click Close. It is important to note you can only check one user's permissions at a time. So if I type Shane Young's name in and I try to type Justin King's name in as well, it'll say you can only enter one name. Okay. So you'll see here that there's also a grant permissions. So you could have added the user this way as well. Um, it's just another way to do it, but we did it through the people in groups. You'll see there's create group, there's permission levels, access request settings, and site collection administrators. Let's actually talk about the site collection administrators first. So the site collection administrator has full control of that site collection, of every document library, every folder, every list, uh, every subsite the Site Collection Administrator has access to it. Um, they don't need to be in any, of the, in any of the groups, so they don't need to be an owner, they don't need to be a visitor, a member, they don't need to be in any of those groups because they are a Site Collection Administrator, they will have access to everything. Um, if they are removed from that group and then added to the owners or members or, visitor, or visitors, then they'll have those permissions. But Jeff Taylor is a Site Collection Administrator and has access to everything on that particular site collection. 
and again, you can add users. We can add Shane Young if we wanted to. We could add Justin King if we wanted to. But we don't want to do that. Click Cancel. So let's go into permission levels. So what is a permission level? A permission level is basically um, you know, what you assign to groups or you know, what you can assign to a user directly. And you can see here it's just a collection of different smaller permissions that make up that permission level. So let's go into edit for instance. So you'll see here edit, description, you can add, edit, and delete lists can view, add, update, and delete list items and documents. Select the permission levels to include in this perm permission level. So you can go in and modify permission levels to what you would want them to be. Uh, I don't recommend modifying any default permission levels. What we could do instead is create a new permission level. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, first let's review this permission level and see what it has. So you'll see here under list permissions, it has all these different Per, small permissions built into this one permission level. Under side permissions, and again, you can add these to the default. We just recommend that you do not do that. So, let's actually create a permission level. And so, to do that, we're going to just simply copy this one. Let's copy permission level. We're going to create a edit no delete. Basically this one is going to have every permission that edit has minus the ability to delete items. Um, this is a common request so it's good that we're going to go over this one. So all I did is you noticed I removed delete items as it was checked which is delete items from a list and documents from a document library. We're not going to change any other permissions but that one. Click create. Now you'll see that you have edit no delete. So we have that permission level. So let's go back to our site permissions page. So here you click grant permissions. Let's start typing in Shane's name under show options. I'm going to send an email and under select a group or permission level. You'll see that edit no delete is there and it's available for you to select. I wouldn't recommend setting this permission level directly. I would attach it to a group. So let's go do that. Click cancel out of here. We don't want to do it that way. We want to create a new group. And the reason you would want to create a new group is it's easier to maintain permissions. It's easier to see you know, what users have permissions in certain places. So let's create a group uh, and call it edit no delete. So you can, again you can enter a description. I'm going to leave that blank. Um, make note of all the settings you can change. So there's group settings you can change. You can allow members to request access to the group. And then you can see give group permissions to this site. So we're going to select Edit No Delete, click Create. So you'll see now in the left navigation, we have a group called Edit No Delete. And it added my user there by default, which is fine. So now let's go set unique permissions for a document library. So click on Documents. Click library, you'll see the entire ribbon appears. Again, this does determine on what permission level you have on your SharePoint site. You may not have all of these buttons, you may not have all of these buttons available to you. You can click on shared with. So what this does is it tells you who this document library is shared with, which is good to know. You can click it, you can invite people. Um, again, only users with a Rackspace username and password will be able to receive an invitation to access this site. We don't want to do that though, but again, you can see it's just the same as adding a user from the site permissions page. 
or the people and groups page. Go to library settings. Under permissions and management, click permissions for this document library. You'll see this big yellow warning that says this library inherits permissions from its parent. In most cases that's fine, but let's say we don't want this document library shared with everybody. Let's say we only want the site collection administrator and Shane Young to have permission and we don't want Justin to even see this document library. That's fine, we can do that. So let's click on stop inheriting permissions. It's going to ask you are you sure you want to do this? We are sure. Click OK. OK, now the one, the big mistake that I usually see here is that you think that the permissions are broken for the site, and they are, but we have to remove all of these groups because all of the users still have access. So we're going to go ahead and just remove all of these groups right now. Remove user permissions. OK. Who wants permissions to this document library is gone. No one but the site collection administrator, Jeff Taylor, has access to this document library. So, and again, we can check that. Click check permissions. Let's type in Shane's name. He's a, he's a site owner. Let's check his permissions. This He has none. Let's check Justin's permissions. Check now. He has none. Perfect. That's what we wanted. But we do want Shane Young to still have access to this document library. So in the ribbon, click grant permissions. Start typing his name. Shane Young. Show options. Uh, I don't want to send an email. And we are going to give him permission directly to this document library. And I am going to give him full control. Click share. So now Shane Young has full control of this document library. Justin does not have permission. Let's check it if you don't believe me. We're going to log out as myself. Yes. You can see all my fun desktop icons. We'll log back in. We're going to log in as Justin King. Perfect. So you'll notice that even though we have the documents web part on the home page, you'll see that Justin doesn't see any of the documents within that document library. What if he tries to access it? Sorry, you don't have access. Perfect. But let's say we want him to see some of the documents, we just don't want him to see specific folders within that document library. Is that possible? Yes, it is. So let's go make that change. So let's sign out as Justin, because he doesn't have permission to make those changes. We'll have to log back in as myself or Shane Young. We're going to log in as myself. Okay, you'll see the document library is back, and all the documents are back. Let's go back to the document library. Click Library. Click Library Settings. Under Permissions and Management, click Permissions for this document library. Basically what we want to do is we just want to delete the unique permissions. We didn't mean to do that. That's not exactly what we wanted to do, which is perfectly fine. You'll see here in the ribbon that there's a button for deleting, Delete Unique Permissions. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do that? We are sure. Click OK. And now once again, everything is inheriting from the parent. Uh, which is again what we wanted. We just wanted to remove Justin's access from a certain folder. So how do I do that? How do I remove just a folder from the document library? It sounds more confusing than what it really is. So let's go check that out. So to do that on the left navigation or quick launch, click home. Click on, you can click on documents from the quick launch you, or you can click on documents from the or the, the documents web part. So you'll see here we have, let's remove his access from the 2013 labs folder because that has important information that I don't want him to see. 
So we click the three ellipse. Click the three ellipse again. And scroll down to shared with. So you'll see that who, who is this? It, so you'll see who this is shared with. Again, this time you'll see invite people, which again is inviting access to this folder. Uh, we want to click on advanced. So you'll see here we get the yellow warning. Once again, this folder inherits permissions from its parent. We don't want that. So what we want to do is click on stop inheriting permissions. Yes, we're sure. Okay. Again, the important thing is make sure you remove all of the groups because they will still have access if you don't. So we want to uh, remove user permissions. And the one button I did want to go, I did want to go over really quick too is the is the delete unique permissions. So you might be tempted to click that, and what that's going to do, um, you've already seen it, is it's going to revert it back uh, to inheriting from the parent. I do see that a lot as well, so make sure you don't do that. Make sure you click on Stop Inheriting, click OK, check the box for all of them or whatever ones you want, and click Remove User Permissions. And yes, we're going to remove all of these people. Now we're going to Grant Permissions. So again, I don't need to add myself because I'm a site collection administrator. Jeff Taylor has access to everything on this particular site collection. Um, Subsites, document libraries, folders, anything. So we want to add Shane Young's access back. We're again, again, we're going to add him as full control. Click share. So now Shane Young does have access, and Justin King does not. We're going to check permissions. I want to check that. Let's check Justin King's permissions just to verify he does not have access. He does not. Close. Let's log in to Justin and now see what he can see. So my name, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to sign in as Justin. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. I wanted to give Justin access to the entire document library, but not that specific folder within that document library. You'll notice it's, it's gone. He still has access to the archive folder because that's fine, and all of the documents. You may be asking, does Shane Young really have access? Let's check Shane Young's access. Log out as Justin. Let's log in with Shane and see. We gave him full control. Let's see if he actually has access to that folder. There we go, now we're logging in as Shane Young, and you'll see we do have access to the 2013 labs folder because he has full control to that document library, but he also has full control to the entire site collection. So let's go check that. Let's go to the documents library, go to library, library settings, permissions and management, click on permissions for this document library. You'll see some items of this list may have unique permissions, which are not controlled from this page. This library inherits permissions from its parents. So let's break this down what this means. So basically this document library inherits from the parent, but there are specific items within the document library that have unique permissions. So let's see what those are. So to check that, click show these items. And it shows us that the 2013 labs folder has unique permissions, which is what we wanted anyways. So click on Manage Permissions, and you'll see that this folder has unique permissions, which we know because we set them, and Shane Young has full control to that document library and to that folder. Well, that's all I have for this video. This was a brief breakdown of permissions in SharePoint 2013. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this has been a presentation by Jeff Taylor with the SharePoint at Rackspace team, and thank you for watching.